Podcast by Friday, episode 29. Having music in your podcast can be expensive if you do it incorrectly, and it could cost you your business if you really do it incorrectly. (laughs) Podcast by Friday with Bill Briggs and Kingsley Grant. We help people create their minimal viable podcast by taking bold action to defeat procrastination and to get their voices heard. I'm Kingsley Grant. And I'm Bill Griggs. And you're listening to Podcast by Friday. Hey, Bill, how's it going, man? It's great once again to be sitting behind a microphone with you to record this episode of Podcast by Friday. Everything is wonderful, Kingsley. I'm so glad to be here with you today. I'm uh, feeling really good and uh, a little bit humorous. You know, we started talking about some stuff right before we got online, so I'm still smiling. <laughs> I, I hope you can hear it in my voice. <laughs> yeah, it's coming through. I think it's so interesting because how, you know, our lives can just have these varied moments where we just don't, you know, things just happen, you know, and you just reflect and you start, okay, wow, this seems to be how struck you funny. And I think it's really a part of how life is, right? Life mm-hmm. happens, right? Yep. You know, one of the, the reasons that I, I continue to do podcasts by Friday uh, episodes with you, Kingsley, is because it's fun. I yeah. enjoy it. I look forward to it. It's one of the highlights of my week, and, and I, I hope that our listeners have that same feeling when they're recording their podcast because it, it is truly amazing, and it makes the job so much easier. It, it does. I think that's where, you know, especially when you do a co-host, and, and we had done a show on that earlier, but when you have a, a, a co-host who's really, you know, you click together, you, get, you, you enjoy each other's um, company and friendship, it makes a big difference. You know, it's like you're not competing, you're just actually doing and bringing value for the person who's listening, and I think that makes a huge difference, you know, so I really myself enjoy this, and, and I think... It's great to have laughter moments and Mm -hmm. and just kind of break up the flow of things, you know? Yeah. The whole um, flow of podcasting is about moods and, and, you know, setting the right mood and the right tone for an episode. And and nothing can can do that like uh, the good interaction between friends. But another thing that can do it is the, the feeling that you get from music. Mm. Yeah, and, and you are a musician. And um, maybe as you're listening, as the audience listening today, you might not know that, but Bill is a serious musician, and I, I talk about music. He plays music. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, music is a big part of my life when I when I was younger, and uh, you know, I rediscovered it in my uh, old age. <laughs> you know. It, it's uh, it's something that in I really... In your seasoned years. Enjoy. Yes, in my seasoned <laughs> years. Uh, you know, but, you know, music can play a, a large part in your life. It, every, it, it's funny because when I walk through the day and different things are going on, I hear music playing in my head all the time. You know, maybe I need to see a doctor about that. But uh, <laughs> mu- I hear music for, for different moods, different... Um, uh, emotions that they're going through, you know, and I'm just humming and whistling all the time. Well, so it's natural for me to want to include music in, in my podcasts, you know, to maybe share my my emotions, my mood with with, uh, with our listeners. You know, I'm from Jamaica, as you know, and, and as you've been listening to our podcast for some time, you probably hear, and even in this episode here, my accent and wonder, where's that from? I'm from Jamaica, so... You know, I grew up around the Bob Marley and the reggae, and, and almost every Jamaican and people in the Caribbean you talk about, that is part of our cultural thing. And it's one of the highlights is to go and just, you know, rock with the music and all that. Mm-hmm. So I, I like the fact because there's something about that um, that just gets you moving, grooving. So if even your podcast, I believe, we want to use that and put our personal touch at times, but to communicate through this, that to people who are listening, and if, as you're listening right now, I'm sure you have a certain kind of music preference that you like, but there's something about that music that changes the tone or the set the mood as you described earlier, Bill. And mm-hmm. so we also have done the very same thing with our podcast by having music in it. And so we, that's, I like the fact we're talking about that today in our episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to talk a little today about music and um, uh, in music 
for your podcast. You know, the the title of this episode is royalty free intro music for your podcast. And you know, we're actually going to talk about intro and outro, which uh, are two terms that we'll explain as we go along. But um, having music in your podcast um, can be expensive if you do it incorrectly. And it could cost you your business if you really do it incorrectly. <laughs> so, yes. so, uh, you know, there are ways to get music into your podcast that are inexpensive and legal. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I think it's great to give the working definition of the word royalty or the phrase royalty free. So as you hear the term, you're wondering, well, what does that mean? Well, the definition that uh, of this phrase is a sum of money paid to an author or composer for each copy of, of a book sold or for, public, for each public performance of a work. So as that relates to us, how would we then define, are we defining that term around the fact of the, um, the money that we will pay or not pay in this regards for the copy of the music we choose for our, our podcast? I mean, how would you break that down? Yeah. Yeah, see, one of, one of the things is um, when, uh, you know, podcast is an out outgrowth of radio, you know, plain and simple. It, it's a modern version of radio. And when radio started, people were playing music um, that they could, you know, get copies of, and they weren't paying the artist anything for, for playing their music. And eventually the artists got together and they got lawyers and they started going after <laughs> these radio stations. And, you know, they were able to determine how many times their music was played and how much was owed to them and it got to be a real mess. And so some, uh, some system had to be set up and that was the royalty system where people got um, paid for play. Mm -hmm. So every time that their music was played, for, uh, for instance, somebody owns the rights to Happy Birthday you know that that song that everybody hears uh, going out Happy there. Happy birthday! No, no, don't, don't, no, no, no. Don't even go there. <laughs> hey, even I said I talk about music. You are a musician, so I'm just yeah, trying to yeah, be, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if 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 you're if you're talking about the traditional <laughs> Happy Birthday to you, and you sing that song, you have to pay. So you're saying I just can't I just can't grab it and just play it? Are you saying that? No, yeah, no. They they that the guys who own that will sue you, <laughs> and you will have to pay for the use. That's why when you go into a restaurant and you uh, uh, you know somebody has a birthday uh, in the restaurant while you're there, they never sing that song. They sing up some song that their company made up that's birthday related to avoid paying royalties on it. And so, uh, you know, that's just one of the realities. So as a podcaster, you can't just throw Michael Jackson's Thriller up uh, on your episode uh, because the Jackson family will then uh, send you a bill. <laughs> you know, I, I, I never thought about that bill until you just mentioned, mentioned it just now about in restaurants. And I... Now it makes sense when you go to a birthday, it's been, you know, uh, recognized in the restaurant, they have their own, you know, I never even thought about the fact that that could even be a violation if they use a music like, you know, Michael Jackson or, or Stevie Wonder's song and just sang it there and they want to be, people hear it or record it, they can come after them. Oh, I didn't yeah. even think about that until you just mentioned it just now. Yep. So without permission... Mm. You're in a world of hurt, or you could be in a world of hurt. So um, in order to avoid that, um, there, are, there are a ton of musicians out there who want to allow you to use their music to grow uh, their business and, and to, to help you grow yours. And they will put out what is known as royalty-free um, music. That doesn't mean it's free. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it it means you only pay once to use the music. I you know I think that's a, a, a good uh, way of um, helping me and and of course the audience understand a little bit more about this term and and when they can use this music. And we mentioned earlier in our, our the topic 
of discussion is the intro, but we know that it's used in different ways because if I go back to the, what you said earlier about in the um, traditional radio and so on, people you would use music to make breaks, to go to the bathroom so they just like play some song, whatever the case might be. And it, it, it changes segment. It, it signifies something is going to happen. And it could be the beginning of the show is about to take place and the music introduces that. It, 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 it um, communicates that. It could be in the middle of the show and it's, we're going to have a break or something at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. So those are the things I believe it signals to the audience that there's something about to happen. Yeah, yeah. I, I know that we were discussing when we got ready to um, put this episode together, you and I were discussing it. I mentioned a little bit of trivia. It's my downfall, I guess. Uh, <laughs> about uh, that song, uh, American Pie, you know, the one where the guy mm -hmm. drove a Chevy to a levee, et cetera. Uh, that got played and became very popular because it was a very long song it was like four minutes or something and that would allow and, and so kind of urban myth goes out there that the reason it got played so much was because it allowed the disc jockey a chance to go to the bathroom while that was playing and not have to worry about getting back in time to change the record because in, in those days they used to actually you know play it off of a, a, a record and uh, mm -hmm. you know have to uh, come and change the uh the record between sets. So, um, anyway, that, you know, I guess what they're saying, you know, put it out a really good song that's very long and you may have a shot at getting played. <laughs> <laughs> and, and some people, like I find, um, do, they record music and they want the exposure and so they make this song available, like I said earlier, just for a very minimal cost, a one time fee you pay and you can use it for. You know, use it as often as you want to. You know, one of our the, the person that I've listened to for many many years, and really he's been my coach and mentor, is Dan Miller, and he has this 48 days uh, podcast. And I remember him having to pay for a song he played on his podcast, and they really get him a season and this is letter, and um, but they were able to, to kind of um, work out some kind of you know reasonable amount where he paid because they were going to take him to court on that. And he said, well, you know, if I can just work something out and settle everything. And they, they did on that. So I want to kind of underscore the importance of making certain that you don't run that um, into that kind of uh, that risk and then find yourself in that situation. And that's why I like the fact we're going to help you understand how to not get yourself in that situation and how to find the right music that you could use for your podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, neither Kingsley nor I are lawyers. Right. Okay? <laughs> and if you feel that you want to know more about this and find out how to be protected, then uh, you could and should seek the assistance of an attorney to, that specializes in this kind of thing to tell you, you know, how to proceed. Because... Um, if you get in legal trouble, you're on your own, Kingsley, and I don't know you. <laughs> this is where we part ways. <laughs> yeah. We got you back on a whole bunch of stuff, but not this. Yeah. <laughs> you're on your own, kid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice knowing you. Anyway, back to it. Um, so why would you want to have uh, music in your podcast? Um, you, know, you know, I I I I we kind of reference uh, briefly on that, but I find for me, what it does, it helps to kind of continue my personality. So I choose a music that would tell the audience a little bit of who I am. So if I'm a fun guy, I'm a person that I really up, upbeat, high, you know. So you find that we come the music I would choose for my podcast. I think it also it reflects your personality. It helps you to break up the show in, in segments. It allows you to have those moments where you can actually introduce either a promotional, something promotional, um, a new, uh, whatever you're doing, you can use that music to kind of, again, as I said earlier, signal something is about to happen and take advantage of that moment because a person listening, really it helps them to be more engaged because you're not just having that one continuous, you know, 30 minutes, whatever it is you're doing, mm -hmm. they in their mind can say, okay, let me take a break, let me take a breather, 
and switches something else. And that's why t even TV, for example, people watching TV, they don't have this one show that goes on unless you're watching a paid version of something. They interrupt with commercials because they know it gives you a chance to kind of um, zone out for a few moments and come back energized to hear what is going to come afterwards. Yeah, a lot of times the music is a transition from one segment or one thought um, or section of your show to another. Um, and we are, are so um, programmed and conditioned to, to, to hear this transition that we don't even really notice that it's happening on, on a conscious level because we just take it for granted. Oh, music, something's about to change. So let me look at the, let me look at the TV. Or, um, you know, we, it's just the way we respond. So, you know, and since podcast is an offshoot of radio, um, again, we can use the tricks that have already been, uh, well, tricks. <laughs> but we can use the tools that have already been established and successful in, in radio to help in our podcast. And that one of them is to use uh, music for intros, um, for things like the theme of our show or, you know, that sort of thing. And, and so um, going back to the idea, Bill, you mentioned earlier that, and before we get into where do we find this part, is music. You mentioned the word uh, intro and outro. So you want to define the outro term because you mentioned that earlier? Okay. Um, well, Matt assumes that folks know what an intro music is. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, Are you the, even define yeah. both? Yeah. Well, okay, sure. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll give it my best. Uh, <laughs> an intro music is um, easily recognizable um, music that introduces your show or starts the show before anything happens you hear the music like um, when we go in um, podcast by Friday when we announce the episode number our music starts immediately do 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 okay that's the sound that kind of identifies to our previous listeners uh, you know to folks that's the theme of our of our show that's the intro Kind of it. Now the outro, um, again, would be music that you hear at the end of the show. It can be the same as the intro music, or it can right. be different. Um, in our case, we just chose a different segment of the same song mm -hmm. as our outro music, and we faded it away so that it got quieter towards the the end of it. You know, just so it lets people know that this is kind of ending now. So the outro takes you out. Of Take, the episode. Yeah. yeah, you're done. You're yeah. heading out. You're going home. So yeah. uh, that's the difference between the intro getting you there and the outro taking you away from there. Yeah, I think that's where I was thinking. Um, I just, and you just said the very same thing. One takes you and brings you in. One brings you out. And you just choose whatever you want to have it. And sometimes I like to get, end on a high note. So I would just like, turn up the beat, baby. Let those guys rock it. And just, you know, boom, <laughs> whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've said all of that now, intro, outro, but also sometimes people use in midway, as you mentioned earlier about transition. So it could also be where you, it, you bring music into your show. You don't want to overdo it, but there could be something you want to introduce. Like if I have a course or when we have our course for podcast by Friday, we may do that. We may use, say, you know, the kind of segue at the right moment where it almost seemed very seamless and use the music to kind of either introduce or play in a very low way in the background while we're talking through that. So it also can be used to um, promote something or tell the audience about something that may not be necessarily the episode title that we are on. Like, for example, we are on Roger Free Music here, and we had the course ready, would say, you know, and by the way, we have this course that's coming up. We want to make sure you don't miss this. And we could have music playing in the background while we talk through that. So it could be done also uh, midway or some point in your in your podcast. You know, it's funny. Uh, we're doing a whole episode talking about music, and you know, being a musical person, every time you you make a, a great point, uh, music comes to mind, and I almost start humming it that that our audience would recognize. But I'm constrained by the fact that if I do hum it, then we probably have to pay a royalty for it. So. Ah, that's right. Let's not get there. <laughs> 
Yeah, so, so let's yeah. avoid that. Yeah, so let's avoid that. This is this is very interesting talk about music without music. Uh, it's, it's interesting. You know, I never even thought about that. I was tempted to start singing something, and wait a minute, I'd be also violating the very same thing we're trying to talk about here. <laughs> yeah, that's why I stopped you on that birthday thing early on. Thank you so much. <laughs> You save my, you know what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, one of the things that uh, about this whole process with the music, um, you know, we say it becomes recognizable. Like, um, and, and and it's a branding element. And and by branding, you know, in in marketing, you know, there's a a, a specific brand that's associated with the business, and you can do the same thing with music. Um, for instance, the the Star Wars brand has a very recognizable mm-hmm. song uh, music that goes along with it that most people could probably hum a few bars of, you mm-hmm. know. But John Williams probably wants to get paid. He's the writer, uh, <laughs> you know. So we won't be humming that. But in your mind, listeners. You know what we're talking about when we say Star Wars, what the theme sounds like, okay? And um, I think Star Wars is owned by Paramount. I, I don't, I don't I, know. I'm not, I'm not certain. Yeah. But um, whichever studio owns the Star Wars franchise spent a lot of money and, and a lot of time getting the branding together for that so that you recognize that. Um, and you know the same goes with Superman, also John Williams, uh, you know, or uh, oh, let's Hawaii Five O, you know, a show that yeah. was on when I was a kid, but is now on again, and the theme song is pretty much the same. I think. Um, yeah, I think. The, I think those those songs, you know, you can almost like when you hear them right away, it's an association that comes into mind. And that's what I think we want to do here. We want you to pick something that you know you're, you're really reflects your personality. And when people hear that over time, they're going to say, oh, that is so-and-so podcast. And immediately, branding begin to take place. So, Bill, where then can a person go and find what they've been waiting so breathless to hear? Now, where can we go and find these music we're talking about? Where then can a person go and find this music we're talking about? Well, there's, thankfully, a variety <laughs> of places uh, where you can get royalty-free music to use in, with your podcast. I, I think it's probably, uh, probably safest for us to talk about the sources that we've personally used or that we know about mm-hmm. um, Rather than you know go into the the other thousands and thousands of sources, um, so um, one source that you may um, use, um, I'm going to start with the one that I used first, and this is okay. kind of order, out of order for us. But um, when I was looking for music for the CNC Router Tips podcast, which is my other podcast that I do, I went to a place um, called soundclick.com s o u n d c l i c k.com and they offer royalty free music um that you know they give you a brief sample of what the music is like you can select in your genre um you know to find out you know if you want jazz you want reggae you want pop you want classic you want heavy metal whatever it is they got it all <coughs> excuse me they've got it all um Separate it out so it's easily searchable, and you go through and listen to a few artists, and when you find your song, you can pay a, a nominal fee to use that song uh, royalty-free. And we're talking um, tens of dollars, not not thousands of dollars, to use most um, of the music. And you can specify how you're going to use the music and where, and that also changes how much you pay. So SoundClick is the one that I used first. You know, I, what I've used first, um, I use is Audio Jungle. And actually, like you said earlier, you pay a very minimal cost. And it starts anywhere from um, like $2.99. And, you know, you, you get 
or you pay for obviously, right? Mm -hmm. And if you want a longer length, and that they break it up in small, you can get a short a short length of audio clip or an extended play length of audio clip. Each length you pay a different price different price for, and based upon the popularity of that music, it determines the cost. But it's not going to be more than in the teens, or the early you know like the low twenties what you're going to pay at a one time amount. So I find I end up buying music in the fifteen, sixteen, seventeen dollar range, which is to me you get you know not the top, but you don't get the bottom of the barrel stuff either, mm -hmm. and you and and I also get enough length, which really a thirty second or a forty five second length is more than adequate because you're not going to be using that long play and you can always re loop it as well because they will give it to you in a loop format as well and so audio jungles where I've used my where I went to first but I also went at the same time to a place where I was looking comparing prices to music bakery the music bakery and that's also a place you can find royalty free music I've used that as well and actually I've used another one but I find these two I tend to go to um, audio jungle and music bakery first before mm -hmm. I go to other places I've also used to, to get royalty free music and the good part about it you can play samples of it right there and you can hear it so you can then decide whether or not it's something you want they will allow yeah. you to download it as well but it has their branding so you, you can't of course you know steal it but you can have it to listen to for a few days to see is this something that you really want for your podcast yeah I I remember we uh, spent a good deal of time going through stuff on Audio Jungle when we were choosing um, the theme for um, Podcast by Friday. And um, that was one that we also used together. Uh, another um, source uh, that um, I have used is Fiverr. That's F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. Um, Fiverr is a website where people will do jobs for $5.00. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it's it's uh, uh, in multiples of five dollars for depending on what you want. And there are actual music artists out there who have either pre-recorded clips or who will create a new um, music file for you right on the fly for five bucks, and you can discuss um, or pay for different uh, rights to use that uh, music. Uh, you know, for different costs. So um, Fiverr can be a good source, although uh, you will have to spend some time listening to their sample clips before you choose an artist to work with. And, you know, I bought some songs from Fiverr before, too, and what the person gave was a collection of other, you know, songs that you can, you know, beats and stuff like that. But I had to be very careful, again, make sure that those beats they gave me were were also you know uh, I had permission to use them because mm -hmm. if it wasn't that that person that who created themselves on Fiverr and there are people who would do that and you ref, you're referring to so be careful that you get it from someone who is having their original music themselves telling you then giving you a you know a, a file that has all this music in it that may not be theirs so I think it's had to be very you know I I found. That happened to me, and I wanted to. Not that I got, I used it, but I bought it, and they gave me a whole, you know, dozens of songs of, of um, instrumentals. But again, it wasn't that person's um, work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you you ended up getting a collection of um, music yeah. from the guy instead of yeah. um, individual files. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Another one I've also used, um, Bill, is. Um, and I, I've done this before for, I wanted a sound for my other podcast. And YouTube, I have some pretty good sound clips. So I wanted a sound clip that sounded like a rocket, a, a launch type of thing. And I went there and found something, and it's free. And it, it's, it's not, you know, a licensed product where you're going to get in trouble to use that. that um, how does that work, by the way? Do you know, I mean, is it, we're... Because they can provide that music for you, and you can use it at your disposal, right? Yeah, um, YouTube has a uh, a library of royalty-free music that is actually free. You don't have to pay to use that that they've approved, um, and I think they did it as a res as a as a result of having so many um, because YouTube has 
folks like you and me uploading their videos on a daily basis to mm -hmm. you know millions and millions of videos every day um, you know the average person doesn't think for a second about throwing you know uh, Ray Charles or Michael Jackson or, or um, uh, you know Adele in the background of their videos but I assure you that Michael Jackson Adele and, and uh, Ray Charles estates all uh, or in in some cases, Adele's still around. Um, <laughs> definitely want to get paid if their music is used, and so YouTube goes through the through a search engine, um, a search of every video that's uploaded to try and find that music so that they can have it eliminated. They either make you eliminated or, or whatever. So in order to give the opportunity for folks to have music in their videos. YouTube decided to create their own library of music that you could use for free to throw mm. in the background of your of your um, videos or your podcast or whatever. And so they made that library available. And it's a really nice service and it's pretty good. And there's thousands, literally uh, thousands of, of uh, choices to choose from. Yeah, so that's another um, option available to you that you can go there and get um, music from, from, from YouTube um, or your library because you could find something. And especially because we're, the whole idea is, you know, by podcast by Friday is that minimal. You know, we want you to start with just get started and we don't want this to get in the way of, you know, having to put money out there. So if you want to go and, and start with something, you can always change it later on and, you um, you know, and get, but just get started. So that's a place you can go, the YouTube or the library. I also, yeah. um, I don't know if I've used, um, Bill, is premiumbeat.com, which also have royalty free music. I don't, I mean, I haven't used it much. I've gone there to search for music. And, um, you know, in, in the search bar, I've typed mm -hmm. in what I, the kind of um, genre of music I'm looking for. And they will give you an, you know, certain samples, you can look through that, but it's a place you can also go. I have not used it very often. I've used it before and bought music from there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I bought music, but it after paying for it and I listened to it after a while, mm, it wasn't that expensive anyway, so I just like, ah, you know what, I'll go some other place. It was mm -hmm. it's not, gonna what, not what I want. So that may also happen as well. So Premium Beat is another place you can go to find um, music for your podcast. You know, um, just a second ago when you were talking about YouTube uh, and their audio library, um, it got me to thinking, uh, um, YouTube uh, is owned by Google. Um, yeah. And um, it occurred to me, uh, when we discussed in, in uh, a previous episode, we discussed uh, hosting, um, uh, audio hosting um, uh, places that where you could host your your audio files for your podcast and it occurred to me that Google Play now is in the podcasting business uh, because just like iTunes Google Play is a is a, a directory of um, of podcasts and other audio files and, and video files and things that you can download and listen to and it and it occurred to me to just do a quick search to see if Google Play offered royalty free music oh. and they do Oh. Now, I don't know if it's a separate library from the YouTube library, but it is something, uh, you know, to consider. Uh, Google's much bigger than YouTube, so mm. it's very possible there may be even a larger library. Um, so that, um, you know, if our listeners are out there and check it out, let us know what you find uh, as you look into um, uh, Google Play's audio library. Um, let us know what you think. Um, you know, by the time this is out, we'll have probably looked, but we'd like to hear from you. Yeah, and, and maybe this this is not exhaustive. I'm sure there's others that you may come across, and you may also want to add to our list. We would love to hear what it is you may have used or have heard of that we did not mention. And we we only mention what we, what we know works, what we do. We work for ourselves. We have used ourselves because we don't want to tell you something that we have not used or have known of someone else who have used. And have found you know it to be satisfactory. So if you have heard of or have used some other music yourself to do so anything else, please let us know so we can add to the list, and others can also benefit from that. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, we, we've we've gone down through uh, quite an extensive list so far of uh, <coughs> of uh, sources uh, for royalty free music. You know, we've had the Music Bakery, we've had Fiverr, we've had the YouTube Audio Library, we've had Google Play, we've had Audio Jungle, Premium Beat, uh, SoundClick, um, and you know, there's just a plethora of them out there. Um, but what? about the folks who just are musically inclined themselves and they want to do their own thing. Well, uh, <laughs> I bring this up. But like you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe not like me, but... Uh, no, you're musically inclined. You could yeah. if you want to, Bill. You could. I, probably, I probably could, but um, I was going to refer to uh, a podcaster that you, you and I both have a great deal of respect for and that we listen to on a regular basis, uh, who has his own music that he creates um, in every episode. And that's Pat Flynn of uh, Smart Passive Income and uh, Ask Pat Show. Uh, Pat uh, beatboxes the intro to his, um, to his shows, and I, I think it's really cool. He's a very talented musician, also a trumpet yeah. player. Go Pat. Uh, <laughs> you know, but... Uh, you know, if you're so inclined, you could roll your own music. Mm. You know, I I uh, I think that's um pretty cool. Now, uh, before we got started, I started looking around to see, okay, how would you record that if you were going to do your own music? And of course, we could go back to episode. Um, I believe it was episode twenty-five where we discussed. About what? Uh, the uh, recording software. Okay, that was um, the recording software was episode number. Well, before I mentioned, you mentioned episode nineteen about hosting um, earlier. So I want to mention that for you as you're listening. If you wanted to know where Bill said about the hosting your your um, your web your tools and stuff like that, it was episode nineteen. Yep, and sure episode fine. Episode 25 is where we talk about recording and video software. Yeah. So um, if they wanted to get to either of those episodes, it would be podcastbyfriday.com slash 1919 uh, or podcastbyfriday.com slash 25. Yeah. The numbers 2 and 5. So um, that would get them to either of those episodes. But in the software, I, I, get, I began to think about... Um, what kind of software you would use to record your own music. And you could use Audacity. You could use any, uh, um, any of the other pieces of software that we mentioned to record your podcast to actually record music. There's nothing to stop you from it. I mean, there is that, that functionality built in. But I also looked into it, and I, and I wanted to know about a little bit more about beatboxing because it sounds cool. Um, now, for those who don't know, you know, uh, who may be as old as I am or older, <laughs> who don't know what beatboxing is, it, it's when somebody um, records a sound usually with their mouth uh, or, you know, slapping on their chest or whatever and layers over that many times. So they'll, they'll record one track doing one thing and then, you know, pop stuff on top of those tracks in order to create an entire sound. And there's all sorts of, of uh, beatboxing um, music out there. If you were on YouTube, you can you know go around and just type in beatboxing and listen to it. But there's software that's supposed to make it easier to align things in a timely manner. In other words, music is all time. And, uh, you know, if you can count to four, you can do four most music, but then you have to be able to count to 8, 16, and 32, you know, subdivisions of 4 in order to get the music really tight. So this beatboxing software helps that happen. So um, some of the software that I discovered in the brief minutes when I thought about this to look it up, because this is one of those rabbit hole moments, you know, where just going out, <laughs> uh, was... Um, open Beatbox, which is an open source um, beatbox music software that you can go and download from 
open dash beep dash box dot s o f t one one two dot com. Mm-hmm. We're going to put a link in the show notes so you don't yes, have to remember have to. all of that. <laughs> yeah, but if you just type "open beatbox" into uh, Google and search it, you will find that software, and you can download it. Haven't used it. Don't know if it's any good. Uh, also, another one that we had was an iTunes app that you can download onto your uh, iOS device, and that's called Incredibox. And you can get that on the Apple Store. We'll also put a link. Um, to that. Uh, but for instance, in beatboxing, now here, we're going to go crazy a little here. <laughs> All right. I want you to bear with me and see if we can pull this off. So in beatboxing, you would take and you'd lay down your bass sound and then add things to it. So like you might go in, in a four beat. Boom, 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 boom. And you yeah. Loop that. Oh. <laughs> so you can loop that over and over again, and then when you get the next part, you can add something to that, like. Um, and you take those two, and you combine them, and you would have a ride cymbal sound and a bass sound going together, hopefully playing in sequence and in harmony. And you can just add and add and add and come up with something. So if I get a wild moment, maybe I will add a few more things to that and put it at the end of this episode. Who knows? I've never done this before, (laughs) so you're seeing it live. So there you go. I I told you the man's a musician. You see... The counting thing, I would just go crazy. I have no idea if I'm, I'm counting. So you see the difference. That's why I talk and let him do the music, right? <laughs> so anyway, that's basically what beatboxing is. If you want to hear some good beatboxing, go listen to Pat Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> Well, or just, uh, you know, as Bill just described earlier, you can also find maybe that site he, he suggested. You might mm-hmm. see some examples there and begin to. But if, here's the thing, if you do something like that, we would love to hear it. We would love to um, hear from you and uh, send samples to us of what it is you have done because, hey, we, we never know. Maybe you want to do a beatbox for this show and send it to us and say, hey, this is what I've come up with as a result of this show for a podcast by Friday. Again, sure. why not? And you can throw that into your two minutes of fame video that we, uh, that we talked about uh, earlier where you record a two-minute long episode uh, of your podcast. You could throw in that. Maybe that's how you get your theme song. And, and, and share it with us on our Facebook group. If you have not joined that yet, make sure you're a part of the community. At part, I'm sorry, facebook.com slash groups slash podcast by Friday. It would be great. It's so awesome to have that there, and we can all have a chance to listen, to talk about it, and just to really continue our conversation in our Facebook group, right? And mm-hmm. you can send that to us, Bill, if they so desire to. What? Um, if they want to send it to us. Say they wanted to send it to us without having to put it in the group. Oh, uh, if they wanted to send us um, through through the normal channel, they could go to uh, podcastbyfriday.com slash two minutes. Uh, the number two and then the word minutes. And, and they, there's a, a form there where you can just click and tell us, uh, you know, the name of your podcast and the you know your information and just send it, send your file on give us a link and we'd be glad to share it on the on the uh, show and I, we can't I just can't wait I mean this is like stirring up to me I just can't you know here I am not as I mentioned before but I think knowing and hearing this again you be, if you're creative bring do your own stuff but again we don't want this to become one more thing that holds you back or an obstacle in your way. We want you to get started on your podcast. And so the minimum viable you know, sound you can get to get going, let's get that part, and then we can always figure it out and add to and take away as you move forward. But don't let this be something that gets in the way of you launching your podcast. Yep. 
and I want to make a very important point here. Um, there is nothing written in stone that says you have to have music in your podcast. Right. Nope. But if you want music, this is the easy way. This is the uh, way that's not going to break your bank, and this is the way that's going to uh, keep you out of jail. So, you know, using <laughs> the royalty-free music is, is one way to do that. So, um, you know, we hope that you find this helpful uh, because a lot of times you don't even think about these things. You don't know to think about these things until somebody brings it up. And that's why we're here to, you know, help you guys get your voice out there, get heard, you know, and that's why we do this. And that's, uh, you know. and we don't want, we, we don't want the person to bring it up, be the person that send you a cease and desist letter or the attorney. That's not the person we want you to bring it up. <laughs> so we are bringing it up before somebody else does like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Think of us as the guy who walks through the minefield first. <laughs> yes, yes, and showing you what to avoid so you, to, you don't get blown up or, you know, because we have experience in our own life or seeing people on the way and we're saying, hey, you know, this is what we've seen happen. Let's avoid it for you at all costs. So again, Bill, we want to just quickly mention the Music Bakery, Fiverr, and all this will be the show notes, YouTube, Audio Library, Audio Jungle, Premium Beat, Google Play, Jewel Beats, SoundClick, or your own. And if you do your own, don't forget. Let us hear about it. Send it our way. Let us celebrate you together. All right. Fantastic. And um, again, we want, want to thank everybody who uh, is listening to this episode and who's listened to the, the, the past few episodes from episode 19 to the present where we've been teaching you the steps that you need to take to launch your podcast by Friday. And where do they find the links for the show, Bill? Uh, they will be in the show notes uh, at podcastbyfriday.com slash 29. 29. Okay. The number 29. And that um, will get them to this episode, and there will be links to all of uh, the things that we've discussed inside of that uh, page. Awesome. So, guys, until next time, um, we want to make sure that you, you know, go, go out. We're going to outro you now at this point to go and get your podcast started. So count this as our outro music by our talking, our voice, right? Go and get it done starting now. This is the section of our show where we would normally pause for a word from our sponsor. Now, if you would like to be that sponsor of the Podcast by Friday show, and you have a product or service that you feel would be of benefit to new entrepreneurs starting their new podcast, then contact us at podcast at podcastbyfriday.com, and we'll see if you'd be a good fit. Podcast by Friday. Take bold action to create your minimal viable podcast today. Check out new episodes at podcastbyfriday.com or on iTunes or Spreaker. <laughs>